Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 21st of June 2020. And yesterday we produced our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 19th of June. Where we broadly pointed out that Gold and Silver were moderately contained last week within the price range we had set them for the past few weeks. And were likely to continue to be so, but is quite possibly going to trade more towards the higher end of the scale this week, especially as more COVID-19 infections are reported. We also highlighted the fact that a fair amount of economic news was being reported this week and that we should pay particular attention to that which is being announced on Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Now today we wish to elaborate on some of the points we've been stating for some years now. We've pointed out that those who've called for immediate dollar collapse or predicted immediate dollar collapse or collapse of the banking financial system being just around the corner since 2008 and 9, we've branded them fear mongers and in some cases pumpers. Now, we have admitted all along, after all, we've been trained in economics, or I certainly most certainly have, in both a Keynesian and monetary theory or Austrian economics, some know it as, and now, more recently, in MMT, Modern Monetary Theory. And we know that you cannot keep printing indefinitely without serious consequences resulting from that. However, I have also pointed out that central banks and governments, when working together, either formally or informally, are able, to a large extent, to kick the can down the road for years, if not decades. Now, we've recently seen pumpers salivate. Yes, literally salivate by telling us this is the year when everything comes crashing down. Well, we don't believe it. Because central banks now have a new trick up their sleeve and it's called yield curve control. So let's take a look at an article published by Bloomberg which explains what all of this is about. Now, it's slightly technical, but everyone, regardless of knowledge in finance, should at least be able to get the gist of what is being said and forecast. Bloomberg article, dated June 21st, 2020. Headline. A buy-everything rally beckons in world of yield curve control. As central banks pump trillions into the world economy, investors are setting their sights on what could be the next big thing in global monetary policy. Yield curve control. The strategy which involves using bond purchases to pin down yields on certain maturities to a specific target was once deemed an extreme and unusual measure, only deployed by the Bank of Japan four years ago, after it became clear that a two-decade deflationary spiral was not going away. No longer. This year, the Reserve Bank of Australia adopted its own version, and despite officials' attempts to cool it, speculation is rife that the United States Federal Reserve and Bank of England will follow later this year. Should yield curve control go global, it would cement markets' perception of central banks as the buyers of last resort, boosting risk appetite, lowering volatility, and intensifying a broader hunt for yield. While many managers caution that such an environment could fuel reckless investment already stoked by a flood of fiscal and monetary stimulus, they nonetheless see benefits rippling across credit, equities, gold, and emerging markets. It depends on the form and the price, but broadly speaking, it's the green light to carry on with the QE trade. Buy everything regardless of valuation, said James Athey, who manages $3.1 billion at Aberdeen Standard Investments in London. While the Bank of England didn't discuss yield curve control on Thursday, some analysts think it could ultimately target five-year notes at a rate of 0.1%, flattening the yields out until that maturity. That could send money flowing into shorter maturity bonds and trigger a sell-off in volatility. Demand for shorter maturities could drive up rates on longer peers, a mixed blessing for pension funds and life insurers, 
which could see their existing holdings devalued but be able to buy new assets for less. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said the usefulness of the policy remains an open question on June 10th. While, while most expect a low yield target for shorter maturities, potentially as soon as September, Societe Generale SA sees a case for focusing further out the curve. Five and seven year treasuries may rally if the Fed looks to go beyond controlling just the front end. Where central banks set their target will be key and could send assets swinging either way. A 50 basis point target on the 10 year treasury yield would spark a bond rally and flatten the curve alongside a probable rise in equities. However, a full percentage point could see bonds bear steepen and trigger a sell off in shares, said Aberdeen Standards Athe. Capping interest rates would help by ensuring corporate borrowers continue to benefit from attractive financing rates. Lower yields in longer maturities would assist investment grade companies, which tend to issue longer dated debt than lower rated borrowers. Meanwhile, junk borrowers would reap the rewards of the general boost to market sentiment. Companies with high debt loads, such as airlines and energy, could get a lift, said Charles Diebel, who manages $2.6 billion at Mediolanum SPA in Dublin. UK banks could also gain as lenders will have escaped the crushing effect of negative interest rates. It will allow the whole rating spectrum of fixed income credits to borrow at incredibly cheap absolute levels during a time of much uncertainty and would certainly be very bullish, said Azar Hussein, head of global credit at Royal London Asset Management. Lower rates in the US could weaken the dollar and help riskier currencies like the South African Rand and Mexican Peso. Carry trades involving the Indonesian rupee and the Russian ruble could also benefit, as well as group of 10 currencies like the Australian dollar and Norwegian krona. According to Vasilius Giannakis, head of foreign exchange strategy at Bank Lombard Odia and CSA in Geneva. The move could also send dollars flowing into carry, tra carry trades targeting US assets. These could include mortgage-backed securities as well as sovereign, supranational and agency bonds. Of course, such a widespread bullish outlook comes with risks, especially at a time when asset valuations are near extremes. A rally in US stocks has pushed estimated price-to-earnings ratios to the highest in almost two decades. Meanwhile, 10-year yields are negative for 9 of 25 developed markets tracked by Bloomberg, while the rest stand well below their one-year averages. It's a precarious bubble that could eventually burst should the wall stimulus spur inflation down the road and eat into investors' profits. While most asset classes stand to gain from a global wave of yield curve control, investors may want to heed lessons and challenges from different regions. Since the Bank of Japan started the policy in 2016, it has largely succeeded in tethering the 10-year rate at around 0%. As for the RBA, it began pinning the 3-year yield at 0.25% in March. Yields on longer maturity bonds rocketed, then eased after the announcement, and the spread between 3-year and 10-year yields remain around 30 basis points wider than in mid-February. For the European Central Bank, the challenge would be the multiple interest rate curves under its remit. The European Central Bank has acknowledged the importance of keeping borrowing costs low across all bond maturities without committing to an explicit yield curve control policy. Regardless, the notion that central banks are approaching some sort of curve control is here to stay. A key lesson from the 2008 crisis was that policy makers need to intervene quickly and investors now expect them to consider any weapon at their disposal. Policy makers tightened up the banking system so much that the markets became too big to fail, said Mark Nash, the head of fixed income at Merion Global Investors in London. Now they have no choice but to keep them working. So we must ask ourselves, do we believe this will actually be introduced? Well, we do. It is yet another instrument that will keep markets working and equities if not skyrocketing, at least maintaining healthy levels. For how long can this work? 
or frankly a number of years if it's done right. So with that in mind, do not allow pumpers to panic you into buying your gold and silver at high premiums because a crash is imminent. By all means do so for other reasons, but not because you believe tomorrow the crash is occurring. But do so gradually, as we do not believe that crash is around the corner. Now that said, we are growing increasingly concerned about a second wave of COVID-19 occurring. So we should keep an eye on that as well and the potential impact that may have on government policy but equally as important on trade and economics. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening and if you haven't already done so please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. Also please when you can, visit our Richard and Greg channel as we update that every few days. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, Please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank <laughs> you.